please give a warm work welcome to co-writer Artur Harari, co-writer and co-director, I mean, and director Justine Triet, and And helping us to interpret um, Asia Turkey Zuberman. Welcome. Um, Thank you. Uh, to both to our tour and to Justine. When I introduced the film, I mentioned yes, that's my little dog there, mon petit chien. Um, uh, when I introduced the film, I mentioned the idea of falling. The first shot of the film is a ball falling. Um, we we see the recurring visuals of falling, but also you're interested in, you know, the falling, the emotional fall of these characters. Um, can you, either our tour and Justine, talk about that idea? Uh, oui, je pense que c'est vrai qu'on était vraiment très, comment dire, ça a été l'image presque matricielle du. Du, du film, on était obsédé par cette chute à la fois physique de la gravité et à la fois euh, euh, voilà on loge cette dans, dans la montagne on, on pose on pose le, le décor dans la montagne avec cette idée évidemment de, ch de chute constante et de remontée et il y avait aussi évidemment l'idée de la chute euh, du couple et l'idée d'observer euh, tous les, les, les détails de cette chute ouais, forcément um, so yeah, the, the idea of the fall was the sort of a, a matrix image that led us through the creation of it, um, both in the physical sense of uh, the fall and the, the gravity of it, and then this mountain landscape where the, the possibility of coming down and back up again is a, is a recurrent um, uh, availability. And then, of course, also the fall of the, this couple and this relationship whose details we wanted to draw out. In our tour, I mentioned that the the trial, the court, the, is only a pretext f for us to watch this couple, um, you know, and their their relationship. Can you, uh, you tell us about the 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 origins of using the trial as a as a as a pretext, basically? Um. Yes, Justine is is uh, kind of obsessed by the, the the trials and and judiciary system because she 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 in her previous films there are already trial scenes and this time uh, at a very early stage when we were thinking about the, this new project she she wanted to come back to that and to but in an, a kind of exhaustive way and so that it could take. As, as as much time as, as it should, uh, so that the the the, um, the whole life of this couple would be uh, examined and, and dissected, uh, so that it, it, it would become almost m a monster, and, and 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 yeah, the 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 space that it takes would would be almost uh, crazy. And I think. Everybody is talking um, for her, you know. She's dispossessed of her narrative, and it was very interesting to enter in that story in that way, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, everybody is talking for her in the trial. And, and one of the things that obviously you're familiar with American trials, and what the the one thing that blew me away in your film is that during the trial, it becomes fiction. It's like they're they're telling. A fictional story of what happened, and you know, can you tell us about that aspect? Oui, je pense que c'est 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 constamment en fait un. Mais c'est une chose qui moi me me, me fascine. C'est quand j'étais plus jeune, je pense que je l'avais toujours. J'idéalisais un peu cet endroit-là, l'endroit de du tribunal comme étant l'endroit où finalement le, la vérité allait surgir. Et finalement, en fait, c'est un endroit où effectivement le deux fictions se, se se chevauchent en fait la fiction de la partie de la défense et de la et de l'attaque. Et, et c'est comment dire, un, on imagine à quel point c'est un tourbillon, une chose extrêmement complexe d'être accusé et d'être dans cette position-là, forcément. 
Yes, sir. I've always been very fascinated by um, this space because when I was younger, I had the maybe naive idea that the tribunal was the place where truth could emerge. And of course, I've come to find that it's the pa place where two fictions straddle each other um, and are worked out against each other, the um, accusation and the defense. Um, and, and so what it was was for us to want to imagine what it is to be in the whirlwind of being in the accused position. Um, language is so important in this film. Um, you know, the fact that um, th we have a couple that speak different languages. She uses ma um, language at times like a mask. Uh, there's an opacity to her at times with the language. Can you tell us about, about latching on to the notion of language and it becomes so instru instrumental in your narrative? Ah oui, je pense que le langage est vraiment au centre du film. C est, c est, c est, ça incarne complètement la, la, la séparation de ce couple et le fait qu'il se parle une autre langue. Mais c'est aussi effectivement quelqu'un qui a l'air de maîtriser, d'une certaine façon, le langage et de pouvoir peut-être nous duper avec ça. C'est-à-dire que c'est quelqu'un qui a effectivement plusieurs, euh, plusieurs facettes. Et ce que je trouve intéressant, c'est que c'est quelqu'un qui finalement essaye de de s'exprimer, c'est aussi une écrivain, donc c'est quelqu'un qui maîtrise aussi cet outil-là. Et en fait, tout ce qui fait qu'elle euh, qu a, ouais, qu 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 a forcément des outils pour s'exprimer va se retourner contre elle aussi au moment du procès. C'est-à-dire que c'est tout ça qui va se retourner contre elle et qui va la rendre peut-être comme quelqu'un, qui va la, lui donner une image peut-être de quelqu'un qui peut nous duper, nous manipuler. I think language is absolutely central to the film. Um, it both is what incarnates most the separation of this couple or their difference and, and the gaps in their languages, but it's also for her the space of a certain amount of mastery and, and as a writer, um, because of her command of language and of narrative, she is thought to be able to dupe us in a way. And so I was interested in making it so that all of the things that all of the territory and tools that where her strength and power lies as a person and a writer um, were going to be the things that were going to be turned against her in the trial. Mm -hmm. In our tour, one of the things that is so impressive about your screenplay is the fact that the more we find out about Sandra's character, she, the least we know about her. Um, can you tell us about balancing that wire act? Um, Yes, she obviously she's she's it's it's like if she uh, from the first scene on she's uh, she she's a mystery because she she can she can speak as much as she wants uh, something eludes and something is is uncatchable and the more the film uh, goes the more words are projected on her so it's it it's one of the major I think topics of the film is how. Um, when you when you want to know something about about somebody, uh, even if she has the the, the space to speak, uh, the words that others are going to project on her will g g are going to, to to push her away. So and it's not because she doesn't want to say because she she speaks a lot. She says her part. She says what we can imagine maybe is true, but. The fact that we 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 feel something as a, as as uh, miss miss uh, we, we miss something from the, from from the start, and then it's all going to 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 yeah make her seem far away and and uh, impossible to completely understand. And when when can you tell us about the fact that you have this on the surface? normal couple, but you flip the roles where, you know, she is the powerful one. You know, he is the stay at home, uh, you know, father. Can you tell us about that? Both of you, <laughs> tell us about that dynamic. Um. Oui, on, je pense qu'on s'est amusé à vraiment, euh, évidemment, renverser les codes de, du genre et de montrer que l'homme était complètement frustré à la maison et dans une situation vraiment très, beaucoup plus euh, voilà, mal à l'aise dans cette situation-là. Euh, je pense que c'est aussi... Le film parle vraiment de la réciprocité dans le couple et de, de, de penser cette chose-là, de se dire comment est-ce qu'on peut euh, 
comment est-ce qu'on fait avec cette chose-là, le couple Comment est-ce qu'on travaille cette chose-là et comment est-ce qu'on peut réinventer aussi ces codes-là On se rend compte que c'est des gens qui n'y arrivent plus, effectivement, dans la scène de dispute notamment, c'est à un moment donné où on comprend qu'ils sont, euh, comment dire, ils essayent de trouver un, une façon de s'en sortir, mais ils n'y arrivent pas. Et euh, ouais, je pense que c'est... C'est aussi quelqu'un, Sandra, qui ne demande pas l'autorisation de prendre la place, elle, enfin, elle, elle la prend. Et ce que je trouve vraiment intéressant, c'est à quel point au procès, elle va être vraiment jugée aussi pour ça, par le fait que, comme ils n'ont pas assez de preuves contre elle, ils vont aller voir du côté de la morale pour dire, voilà, c'est pas forcément une assez bonne victime, elle prenait trop de place, etc. etc. Et ça, je trouve ça passionnant, à quel point, à un moment donné, l'endroit du procès, c'est aussi l'endroit où on va profondément juger moralement aussi quelqu'un. Um, so we had a lot of fun reversing those gender roles and creating the situation where the man is stuck at home in a kind of frustrated position. Um, and then more largely, we wanted to think about the relationship and what a couple is. And, and I think the question of reciprocity is really what's at stake and the reinvention of codes of reciprocity and how certain divisions are, are made and parsed out. And and the fight scene is the fight is the scene where we see them, we see kind of the failed attempt at reinventing a new form of, of um, uh, balance between them and in part because Sandra is a character who really doesn't ask for permission to take up the space that she has or, or, or is an unapologetic about it and in the trial that's eventually what's going to be Uh, what she's going to be um, scrutinized for, because in lack of evidence um, uh, towards her culpability, it becomes a question of her moral standing and whether or not she is a, a good or a bad victim. If I can just, because I'm, I'm thinking something that maybe we, we never really discussed with Justine, but um, one of, of the uh, subterranean uh, meanings of the film might be about the in a way, the, the vanishing of man, the disappearing of man. That, and on, in this couple, but maybe in a more large scale, and it's something very uh, very strong today, not the fact that man is disappearing, because it, of course it's not the case, but the fear uh, in, in, in the minds of men uh, that maybe something is happening that's going to, yeah, Yeah, cover them and, and make them disappear. So, <laughs> it's it. I think it's a fear. Uh, it's a strange feeling today, and uh, it's not. Sandra is not. She doesn't want to 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 be. In my opinion, she doesn't want to be the boss or to be the the, the strongest one. It's just she doesn't ask. She 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 does what almost every man da does from the beginning of the world, and it's just that. She's she's stronger than him, and he's he's he feels that something is taken from him, and is uh, because he's, he's he's been raised like everybody in a world where it was the contrary. He he should take the place, and so it's a, it's a, the film is about somebody who who, who sees his place uh, being uh, yeah not not obviously given to him. Um, Justine. I've seen your previous films. I'm a fan, Sybil, and the other films. But in this film, the, there is a simplicity to your approach. Um, can you tell us about, you know, your, you know there is no music. Um, there is no embellishments. Um, there is a simplicity in a very good way. Can you tell us about why the, the, that approach to this film? Oui, je pense que le fait de, de faire un film de genre fait qu'on se pose forcément les questions de... Il y a tellement de films, tellement de choses. Le robinet à fiction est tellement ouvert partout <rire> sur ce genre de film euh, que du coup, il faut être très personnel, je pense. Donc très vite, quand on a commencé à travailler avec Arthur, on s'est dit qu'est-ce qu'on va... Euh, comment on va rentrer dans, dans cette histoire sans faire la même chose qui s'est qui est, déjà fait En fait, ça n'a pas d'intérêt. Donc euh, je crois que la question de la musique s'est posée très tôt comme une chose euh, voilà, de, de, de vraiment ne pas ajouter de musique additionnelle, ne pas jouer ce jeu-là, euh, ne pas survendre l'émotion, mais vraiment justement être sur quelque chose de très réaliste, très raw, très cru, très, euh, très, euh, ouais, avec très, très peu d'effet de style, en fait. Euh, et, euh, et donc, je pense qu'on a, on a, ouais, a, euh, a beaucoup été dans ce sens-là, je pense, euh, aussi par le choix de... 
de, de la mise en scène, de tout. Enfin, ça a été vraiment... Euh, on s'est vraiment amusé, finalement, à... à à faire notre film de, 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 de même si c'est pas un pur courtroom légal au courtroom mais je veux dire, en tout cas on a eu l'impression qu'il fallait être le plus euh, euh, sincère et le plus honnête possible le plus proche de nous um, when we started working on what is a genre film in a, in a, in a kind of a, because of the courtroom courthouse drama kind of genre and so many registers of um, fiction that are really abound during today there's just Um, such a variety of films being made um, in these sort of tropes. It was very important to us to find our voice in that and the sincerity of our voice in that. And the question of the music came up quite early as something that was going to be a defining feature of not trying to lean into kind of stylistic figures of expected tropes of, of sentimentalism or, or to sort of lean into a, a, a sort of pre-masticated version of what one should feel along the line of the script. And, and so it was really very fun for us to, 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 to look for a sort of pure or closer to a, something that would be personal and sincere enough that we could defend um, birthing it into this genre for ourselves. And your, can you tell us a little bit about the editing with um, Laurent Seneschal, um, especially in the trial scene where There, the time seems to, there is long, uh, it's long, um, it, and also there is kind of like a greediness to it, like scenes seem im imperfect. Um, do you know what I mean? Oui, complètement. Je pense qu'on a été vraiment dans ce sens-là, de, de surtout pas être dans l'efficacité, d'essayer de faire vivre vraiment ce moment, d'être dans, dans ce... Comment dire une image ouais très impure, imparfaite, de chercher des choses, euh, des accidents, des moments, des des plans qui seraient pas parfaits. De, je, je pense que vraiment aujourd'hui il y a tellement de films passionnants mais très très comment dire euh, extrêmement bien faits où on, on sent vraiment le travail pour nous faire croire à cette fiction mais où l'accident est interdit. Euh, les caméras sont toutes plus meilleures <rire> les unes que les autres. Et donc, j'ai l'impression que la chose la plus passionnante à faire aujourd'hui, c'est presque l'inverse, c'est-à-dire de se dire non pas que c'était mieux avant, mais, mais juste que... Enfin, euh, moi, j'ai l'impression que ce qui m'intéresse dans les fictions et tout, c'est toujours quand il y a un endroit qui est un peu euh, imparfait, quoi. Quand il y a quelque chose de, 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 de vivant, quoi. Une matière qui n'est pas totalement finie, quoi. Donc, on a été chercher vers ça, oui. Um, so, we very much went in that direction um, of, of trying to... Um, not seek the kind of most efficient or efficacious, uh, uh, um, um, uh, both dr dramatically and formally. Um, and, and in the trial scene particularly, it was very important to have these kinds of impure images where accidents were welcome, because I think so many films today are, are, are very, very good, but are somehow overly well made, and you, all of the lenses of the new cameras kind of outperform each other. And I think what's interesting now is to, is to kind of do the opposite, not that it was necessarily better before, but what I love in fiction is to find these imperfections and, and a place where the, the, the matter is alive. Artur, in your script, there are no flashbacks. Um, In the court scene, we hear the recording, and then we see the the fight sequence. Can you take a? Can you tell us about that choice of not showing us flashbacks? And then, how difficult was for you to the two of you to write that fight sequence? And then the choice of us not seeing what we don't see towards, towards the end of the fight sequence? I know it's a complicated question, but... Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it was, of course, this scene was uh, maybe the, the most difficult to write and to imagine also because when we decided that there would be, uh, um, there was going to be a, a recording, a, a very strong piece of, uh, of, of recording uh, that would be the, the highlight of the, of the trial, uh, We were, <laughs> in advance, a bit scared by the fact that we had to, uh, we être à la hauteur. We had to. And it's the heart of the of the movie. So yeah, it's, we the, it's it the beating heart of the movie, and we 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 couldn't fail. So uh, when we started writing the scene, it was uh, the the first attempts were we 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 weren't, and Justine was not pleased with it because uh, we most of the time when you start writing something which is 
uh, these kind of scenes we, we've seen a lot. So it would, the cliches were coming one after the other, and then we would read, read it, what we, we just wrote, and, and we wouldn't love the characters, like they were vulgar or they were not, it was not, we, we, there was no way for us to really love them or to... The question of the p impulse, I think. Yeah, and we, we, we uh, Justine was... We want to avoid, I think we want to avoid the, the you know, the pulsions, it's just to, in many movies, people are just uh, yelling each, uh, on each other, and I we would we would push. We want, wanted to push the, the the impulse at the end of the of the scenes, and before to it's a it's a you know it's a battle of ideas, and I think uh, it's a, in little it's like the the courtroom in little you know before it's like a rehearsal of the of the courtroom. And uh, so it was a long process because at the beginning we were like, okay, I don't care about that people. They are not, you know, they are not interesting for me. So we had to spend a lot of time to find the way to, to be interested by them and to, yes. And all along... And you the question is love. Sorry, the question, the central question, question is love. I think it's, it stays, it's still... They still love each other, even they are like this. I think love is, uh, you know, people are not talking when they don't love each other. So I think they fight to. Yeah, and but all along when you were writing, it was going to, we were not going to see. At uh, the end, yeah. The, the, the question, uh, uh, for a long time, we were, we were wondering if, 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 if it was possible that the scene would be Entirely only sound, and because it's a, it's a, it's a document, uh, the, the 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 scene has been recorded, and so we knew it would be uh, the center piece of the trial. But then we imagined that it would be really strong to finally see them together, because we we've never seen them together. We we barely saw him on photographs and uh, like a, a short piece of, of video, and then uh, the fact that. The, the dead man would finally be alive, and with her, it, would, it, it seemed a very exciting idea. And then uh, the, the fact that because this this image nobody sees, we see it. We have the privilege to see it because but we because we the don't film see, but we don't see the strike the strike we don't see the, the, the yeah the the, the hitting the, the at hitting. the end and the, so it's it bring brings us back to the position of the. Of the the audience and mo most of all of the kid, who yeah. he he cannot really see because he, he has a, he has a problem with his vision. But also he he never saw this. He will never see his father again, and so he's he's, he's left with only the sound. So the sound is ambiguous. It's ambivalent. We 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 never will know. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up because in, in that scene you finally see the connection of of. Milo, I forget the character's name, is Milo, is the <laughs> actor. Daniel, we see his connection, you know, that, that he's not able to see, and, and he's actually hearing. It's, it, um, which leads to my next question. The idea of you have had children in your other films, but they have mostly been silent kids in this, in this time around, uh, Danielle is so is almost like a counterpart to his mother and his story. Can you tell us about bringing in the son into the story? Yes, I think it it was a big the big challenge for me when uh, we were at the beginning of the writing process. I was obsessed by that. I said, okay. I'm going to make the first movie, uh, but not the first movie, my first movie with, <laughs> with a, a child uh, in the center. And uh, yes, of course, I was obsessed by the idea, okay, he would, he would, he would be in, uh, in that place at the, at the courtroom and he received all the things in, uh, in her, his shoulders. Um, and uh, yes, it was a big, things because, big thing because, first of all, I, searched, uh, I was looking for a child blind child and after we didn't uh, find it so we switched and uh, we met Milo and Milo was so um, yes he was so so different uh, I think he he has no cell phone in the real life he's like a nerd you know 
uh, he's, uh, he's uh, very he's very different, you know. So uh, <laughs> he had always a book in, uh, you know, <laughs> like a, uh, like a poet uh, in the. So yes, and uh, it was really easy with him. He was so so special, and uh, we had to. His, his uncle wa is blind, so he used he has uh, he used to be very close to blind people, and after we were we yes we worked a lot of course before and on set of course. But but Sandra, you know, actually I think when you work with with um, with uh, children, the most of the most um, the, 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 uh, actors are directing. Uh, people like me, you know. It's, um, ah, sorry, sorry. Les, les, les acteurs dirigent autant que moi, les, 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 même peut-être plus des fois que moi, les, acteurs, les enfants. Actors, other actors, co-actors direct the children as much as I do. Um, Artur, the character of the prosecutor, can you tell us about writing that character? I, I mean, he's the villain of the story, but he's seductive. Um, <laughs> You know, he's such a fascinating, complex character. Can you tell us about... Yes. I, I, I was very involved in the writing of, <laughs> of, of, of the, in the trial, and, and especially his, his part. It was very fun to, to write. Also because it, it brings back memories of a lot of, of films, and, and, but also with the, the, the challenge of not just repeating these cliches, but playing with it. And he's a player. I think if, if I should think of one example in a film of a car character... Um, George, uh, yeah, George, George C. Scott in, C. Scott uh, in Anatomy uh, of a Murder. Of a murder. Yeah, yeah, because he has this, this uh, repulsive way of being no. nasty <laughs> and very, <laughs> very, very intelligent but very dangerous. And his, his name is Dancer in this film. And he dances with... The, and there's one scene where, where he, he's really disgusting with the, the, the woman in trial, uh, played by Lee Remick. And, and yeah, he's, it's like he's trying to caress her, to, to trap her uh, with his voice and his, and his face very close to her. So our character is not the same, but he has this kind of, he's aggressive and he's very ironic also. Uh, to me, he, he, he uses, I don't blame him, we don't blame him because he uses all the, the weapons he has to do his job, and his job is to, uh, it's weird, his job is to defend the, the position of the dead man. The husband. It's yeah. like he's, he's the voice, or he's the many voices that we can imagine uh, for the husband, for the, for the man. And so he's, uh, yeah, he's, he, he, he goes all the way to it. So he, he, he wants to hurt Sandra because he's in this position. Um, and then on the other flip of the coin, we have Swan, who is more nuanced. At times, he seems, it, it was so surprising to me, he's kind of weak. Um, but also, I love the fact that you, you, you know that there was something going on with him and Sandra that adds a layer to it. Can you tell us about writing and bringing that character into the mix? Well, um, yeah, the, the idea of, of a, um, uh, a guy who would be called by a friend to defend her and who is, from the very first moment, in a way, he's caught, he's trapped, because he... We, we, we had a, a counsel, uh, a lawyer, who, who, whom we could ask every question, and he really insisted on the fact that this situation is very common, like you have... You, a friend comes and he says, please defend me, and you, you know you should say no, but you cannot because it's like just the, f the, the faithful relationship you have with, with him or her. And so we, we, we were very interested in that position, in that place. And the idea that this, this, this man is not, maybe is not such a good lawyer, he maybe is not the best one to defend Sandra, but uh, the fact that he cannot say no and he has this bond with her makes him the best for her, like he will not go away, he will not turn, turn away from her, and, and he works, he tries. But obviously in, in front of him, there's a kind of a virtuoso, a virtuoso of, the, of, the, of the trial, very aggressive, and so he's kind of also reflecting the, 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 
this this um, I don't know this position of the the, the man also uh, he's he's less uh, assured than the guy in front of him he's he's, he's uh, he had he, yes he's hesitating and it, it it makes him in a way maybe close to Samuel. Um, Laurent, I have a uh, um, Justine. I have a question. Your cinematic choice: When the young boy testifies, the camera ping pongs back and forth. It's such an amazing moment. Can you tell us the genesis of that of that yes, choice? Yes, uh, yeah. It's an accident. It was, you know, it's it's an accident. I I was just dreaming in front of the combo, you know, the television. Uh, and my my DOP was just was pushed on the right and on the left by his assistant. And when I saw this, it was very quick, very fast. And when I saw it, I said, "Okay, we before we just do, did what everybody did, did like very uh, uh, long, long, slow shot, you know." And when I saw this, I said, "Okay." Maybe it's really interesting to, but it's an accident. So well, I like so much. I like so much when on set you can catch, catch uh, it's the, brilliant that because kind of when you uh, watch it, I go, he's torn between yeah, yeah, the, yeah. you know the it parent. Was, uh, if I if I'm correct, it was not you 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 hadn't designed it to be the 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 only shot. I mean, you shot it, but you were not sure to use it without uh, cutting. Si, si. Oh, you designed it, you, you yes, knew? Yes, yes. And we're so used to watching American trials that are so organized. There is a chaotic, disorganized nature to, is that something that you created or is that how French trials are? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very different, yes, because there is not, here I think somebody is giving the, the, the talk the way to talk at everybody. But in France, you can, it depends of the judge, you know, it depends of the president. Enfin, in France, it's the president, here it's the judge. And so we we choose to, to, to exaggerate a little uh, of the reality. But yes, it's more anarchic. Anarchic? Yes. Than, uh, anarchic, yes, yeah, absolutely. Of course, yes. And I think it's, it's interesting because uh, uh, you can feel, uh, in a way, it's it's a real. Uh, it's faster sometimes because there is not the objection. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know, so it's very interesting. Yeah. Okay, and you worked with Sandra before in Sybil. So you've worked with Sandra uh, before. Did you write this role for her? Yeah, of course, definitely. I I remember when we. It was just, uh, um, we, we had the idea just one week before the pandemic time, you know? So <laughs> it was a disaster. One week after we were, all of, all of us, all of you and I, and we uh, were closed in boxes, you know? And, uh, and so I remember that period was so intense. Um, and yes, of course, Arthur and I was like, okay, we, I wrote something before for her, but I, I put it in the garbage because it was not so good. And after, yes, we we think about that because I think she's so elusive. She's so, you know, uh, she's uh, uncatchable. And um, I, I, for me, it was impossible to shoot that movie with an, uh, another person. Yes. Yeah, one of the best performances I've seen this year. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it, it's, Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And last question, because we have to wrap up. Indulge me, you see my dog there, Snoop. To me, Snoop represents the husband, and, and we see him throughout the movie. Um, you know, can you tell us about, if I'm totally crazy, that Snoop is, is sort of representing the husband? Yeah, of course, you're totally right. I think Snoop is like a, the ghost of Samuel in a, in a way. And um, yes, he can see. Uh, he's, he represents the eyes of Daniel. In this, in, and yes, I think he, he, he's the ghost of Samuel too. So yes. I think he's just a dog. <laughs> and, we, and we project well, what we want. Well, that's because you're the husband. Yeah, <laughs> of course. We project on him. <laughs> but she, she's the boss. So. 
what, what an amazing delight to have both of you guys here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. What a triumph.